The Minister in charge of the Turnbull Government's Energy and Environment Policies is Josh Frydenberg, and he joins me from Canberra. Josh, good to see you, mate. Hey, listen, what good's going to come out of this Finkel report? Well, I think you will welcome the fact that he uh, sees renewables as requiring battery storage or other forms of backup power, and that is something that we are looking forward to his recommendations on tomorrow because the Finkel report was commissioned after the blackout in South Australia where the Labor government there led by Jay Weatherall was extremely reckless in allowing 47 per cent of their power to come from wind and solar without the necessary backup and without the necessary frequency and control and stability services that you get from gas, you get from coal, you get from hydro, but you don't get from wind and solar. So I think that will be very positive. Um, you're also going to see him require notice periods uh, for, from big coal generators uh, before they're allowed to close because when Hazelwood closed, uh, we only had a few months notice and you can't plan for a national system when big generators like that close with very little notice. And then of course, the other big issue he's trying to solve for is the higher electricity prices and one way he's looking at doing that is through generating and incentivising more investment and of course you've talked about the clean energy target as one of those options. Can you now promise us that from the report and from your response to it that electricity prices will now stop rising? Well the reason why electricity prices have been going up is because the wholesale or the generation component of your electricity bill has significantly increased in the last four to five years. Now, unfortunately, that has occurred because principally gas prices have risen dramatically and Labor governments from Victoria to Northern Territory have locked up decades worth of gas reserves and not developed them. At the same time, we are exporting two-thirds of what we produce and that's why Malcolm Turnbull has announced that we'll put on some restrictions on those exports. So gas is driving higher wholesale prices and the other big that's thing that all, is driving that's higher... All, sorry, sorry Minister, but that's not all obviously because uh, also that's a component, true. as we saw in Victoria with Hazelwood, it is the yes. deliberate driving out of business the big coal-fired power stations in South Australia and in Victoria now that is also yes. driving up uh, the, these prices. Can you now guarantee that if you get your way with this Finkel report, you respond to it, that those prices will no longer rise? Well, that is certainly our um, goal, is to drive down electricity prices by getting more investment. And you're right about Hazelwood. You're right that the Andrews Labor government tripled the coal royalties on Hazelwood. You're right that the Labor government in Victoria has put a 40% renewable energy target and you're right that the Labor government in Victoria have locked up gas supplies so it's no wonder electricity prices have risen in that state. So what we're trying to do is create an environment which can get more investment because you know as well as I when supply goes out of the market and coal fire stations close something needs to come in and replace that generation and that's why we want a technology neutral approach. It doesn't matter if it's coal, it doesn't matter if it's gas or if it doesn't matter if it's it's renewables with more storage, not renewables without storage, renewables with storage, then all of the above can make a difference to reducing electricity prices. All right. If you're going to be technology neutral, right, and you don't care, why don't you just scrap the uh, mm. renewable energy target, which is not technology well, as a, neutral? Well, the diabolically uh, difficult position we've got with the renewable energy target uh, is that if you were trying to re remove it, uh, and abolish it. You wouldn't get it through the Senate, but what you would do is you would stop investment in renewables. And if you stopped investment in renewables, then the prices of the certificates which retailers are required to buy would go up, which would effectively act as a carbon tax on industry and households. So we are determined to keep prices lower, and if you try to abolish, unfortunately, the renewable energy target, you'll just send electricity prices higher. What a mess. What an absolute mess. Why don't you... It's tough. Why don't... Did you ever consider... Hey, listen, even a though you can't get it through the Senate, you've <laughs> got to make the case 
why don't you just say we're leaving the Paris Agreement, we're going to do what Donald Trump did, just leave it, no more, the prices are too high, the cost is too much, the jobs lost are too horrendous, the gain to the planet is zero, we've had this discussion before, the, planet won't, the climate won't actually change from what we do, why don't you just junk the whole horrible facade and just say, listen, it's jobs and they're lower prices? Well, Andrew, the reality is we can meet our Paris targets. And the reality is America was reducing its emissions quite significantly and will continue to do so for lots of reasons. Energy efficiency, because they're moving away from coal into gas. Do you know in the US they get more of their power today from gas than they do from coal because they've had the shale gas revolution. So know, the US great, has already got that matter. transition. I accept that. But listen, listen, if it, doesn't, if it doesn't even matter because we're going to meet them anyway because of whatever, why don't we junk the stupid renewable energy target? Why don't we just junk the Paris deal? Why don't we junk all of it? Because, it, honestly, the cost of all this is simply not worth the gain. There's no gain to the climate, and Australians are losing their jobs. 750 workers at Hazelwood lost their jobs. Smelters are on their backside, you know, the bare bones of their backside. This is all going to hell in a handbasket, and you know. You've, I've asked you this a million times. I'm not going to go through that again because I know you get frustrated. But you know this makes zero difference to the temperature. Why are we doing this? Why can't you at least make the argument to stop it? Well, what I'm saying to you is we have taken on those commitments under Tony Abbott. We took them under Tony yeah, Abbott, the 26 have, look, to 28 percent. I criticised him too. If he comes in here tomorrow, I'll say to him, you idiot. It was wrong, and he knows it was wrong. And I'm asking you, you're carrying the ball now. You're the great hope, yeah. we, we're told, of the conservative side. Be conservative, <laughs> call out the bull and say, this does not make any difference. Why are we doing this? Emperor's new clothes stuff. Time to stop. Look, thanks for that vote of confidence, Andrew. But the reality is we've got to drive down electricity prices and the problem I'm trying to solve for is not is it the emissions that you keep focusing on, it's actually the higher electricity prices which are a result of a lack of investment that we have seen in recent years outside of renewables. Do you know the last coal-fired power station that was built in Australia was in Cogan Creek in Queensland in 2007? Okay. Well, if you the, agree the last to this, gas when's the next one going to be? Well, I'm, I'm convinced that if you get more regulatory certainty with a mechanism, then you are more likely to get that level of thermal generation well, give us a investment. Time frame. Give that... us a time frame. If we want more well, coal-fired power stations, and I say yes, because we've got hundreds and hundreds of years of supply here, when do you think you can get a commitment to an investment in a new coal-fired power station in Australia? What? Uh, I'll give you a ballpark. Will you get it in three years? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it doesn't matter if it's coal or it's gas. If you could get more base no, load made, generation, that, that would be a good thing. You were the one that made the point about the coal-fired power station. Yeah. When, yeah, and you know, and your it... reforms, are we going to get one? Because here's my, here's my challenge to you. You ain't going to yes. get one. You are not going to get one for five, ten, probably even fifteen years. True or not? Well, let me tell you something, Andrew. The reality is that when someone builds a coal-fired power station, they're building for a 40-year investment. And while we'd love the Turnbull government to last that long, or any other coalition government, the reality is they are planning for the day when the other mob get in. So you need a degree of regulatory certainty in order for those investments to take place. And we don't have that now. So why I'm so interested in trying to get a mechanism to provide that regulatory certainty is because it will lead to more investment. And more investment means lower prices. That's the I reality. What you're doing. And I business what as you're usual. Doing. There's, there's a lot of sense in, in, in what you're saying, provided you first make the first stupid assumption, which is we've got to cut our emissions, we've got to do our Paris Agreement. And the guy making you uh, assume that is, of course, the Prime Minister. Let's see what happens if there's a new one. But listen, Tony Abbott. No, there's not going to be a new one. Come on. Don't, don't get your hopes up, Andrew. Here. Let's have a quiet bet. <laughs> Let us have it. No, I look at the polls. You look at the polls. You know it's over. But listen, Tony Abbott warns that you are letting Bill Shorten off the hook. Is he right? Yeah. Not at all. And uh, Bill Shorten 
has a 45% emissions reduction target, right? So it's nearly double what the coalition has, and that is only a recipe for higher prices. Bill Shorten today in his press conference said the life of coal is over. Well, the life of coal is not over, and you will see tomorrow from Alan Finkel how coal will continue to play a major role in Australia's energy system. Now, today in our national electricity market, we get 75% of our power from coal. 10% comes from gas. Around 7% comes from hydro. We get 5% from wind, and we get only 3% from solar. So you can see from those numbers that the role of coal is critical today Absolutely. and will be critical for years to come. And the coalition no, is not afraid Honestly, to Josh, say that. You're spot on. You're spot on, but I'm just saying Labor is desperate to come to an agreement with you to end, as they say, this war. Well, we're not and doing bad agreements give... with them. Well, we're we'll not see. doing bad we'll agreements with think. them. Hey, listen, quickly before I go, uh, Josh, another thing that I know you're concerned about too. Um, you hold the seat of Kuyong, which is in Melbourne, of course, and the three shocking crimes today in Melbourne, all by men and women of African appearance, which usually means, of course, people from refugee families from Sudan or Somalia. One was an aggravated burglary in North Melbourne, two men threatened with a machete. There was also a drive-by shooting, and then women of African appearance, alleged shoplifters who were involved in a violent brawl at Southern Cross Station, put one person in hospital. And, of course, on Sunday, another refugee shot dead a man in a jihadist attack. Now, can you explain, it's, I'm, not, I'm not accusatory here, why won't your government just shut the gates on refugees until you can prove we are not putting Australian lives in danger like this? Well, let me, let me make a couple of points. The first is um, that the immigration uh, 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 controls that we put in place, the vetting that Peter Dutton under, has undertaken and his deportations of serious criminals, I think has been hard but also wise. And I think, you know, it's, it's absolutely needed and the people have confidence in, in the moves that the Turnbull government have taken on border protection. But when it but comes to Victoria... You don't believe in shutting the gate? Just shut the gate. Why don't you just shut the gate? Well, you know, if I think of shut the gate, I think of those those greenie movements who want to stop the unconventional gas yeah, uh, exploration. I don't, I don't right. think. Okay. No, I no, I no, I no, I don't I think we should asking, shut. Just you know, you know, a million know. millions of Australians are asking. I know. Why are we importing more people of the kind that are causing these headlines? And the government will not answer, clear, you know, crisply, well, clearly. Why do you okay, just shut the gate? Okay, let me just tell you. OK, let me tell you, people who come to Australia who don't abide by our values, by our laws, who don't go about in a peaceful way, have no place in Australia. And I'm but sick and tired the of the... the but, I, no, I'm sick and tired of the Andrews government, sick and tired of the cuts asking, to police... I, I, I'll, the, look, don't... Look, you stand behind me, but I'll attack the Andrews government harder than you will. My point is, your okay, responsibility well, is the immigration... The refugee program, yeah. you've left the gate open, 19,000 a year every year, and you won't shut it while we try to sort out the problems caused by the ones you've been importing already. I mean, I don't understand why you just shut the gate. Well, the reality is you do need to be extremely vigilant on your borders. You do need proper vetting. And at the same time, you need lots of police on the beat. And what the situation in Victoria is scary. People are afraid to walk the streets now. They're afraid in their homes. Andrews is as weak as water and people are fed up. And it's time the Victorian Joseph government Gallico, stood you up. Are, you are absolutely right. Victorian government, so weak on this issue, but you won't shut the gate. But anyway, look, I won't, I won't push you on it. I know it's not your portfolio, and I really thank you for, uh, you know, being one of the ministers that has the guts to come on and, and, and be front up. Good on you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Andrew.